Hello, Facebook. Hi there. How's it going? Welcome to uh, CNN's uh, Rio studio on Copacabana Beach, which is uh, absolutely beautiful. And the Olympics are well underway. And we've been having a great time here meeting a lot of the uh, athletes. And we've got a couple of guests here today who are slightly unusual, not because you personally are unusual, but because <laughs> you're <laughs> representing one of the smallest countries here at the Games, the country of Nauru. And just a little statistic for you. There are more athletes in the village here competing than there are people living in Nauru. So that's pretty cool. So I'll let the guys introduce themselves and then we can have a fun conversation. And by the way, if you want to uh, send us any questions, then please do and uh, we'll try and answer them as best we can. So let's start with you, mate. Uh, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Opini. Uh, I'll be competing in the men's under 90 class in judo. And your event is coming tomorrow. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And, and Elson, what is your name and what do you do? Um, my name is Elson Dr. Phil, and I'm a weightlifter. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the Olympic experience, because this is the first time here for both of you. Uh, let's talk about the opening ceremony, because there's tiny little Nuaru in the middle of all these other countries. What was that like for you? Um, yes, um, being the smallest uh, country growing up, uh, being together with the big country, it's very overwhelming. I mean, the opening ceremony itself is overwhelming. Mm. So it's a really good experience to be actually taking part in that. And there are teams here with hundreds and hundreds of athletes, and it's just the two of you guys with your coaches and a couple of officials too. Um, you must have been kind of almost swamped down there on the track. Uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny, right? Just the two of us walking around, and like Australian team are really big, and just the two of us. It's it's just. <laughs> What do the other athletes make of Nuaru? I mean, had they even heard of you before they got here? Um, no, uh, most of the people, they don't really know uh, Nauru and where it actually is. So um, coming down to the Olympics, I think it's um, also good for exposure because now people can actually see that, oh, Nauru, oh, that's a country. what country is that? So they can actually um, look it up and uh, good exposure for us too. So yeah. yeah. Mm. For those of us who are wondering, where is Nauru? Uh, Nauru, it's in the center of the equator, but it's a really small country, so you can just look it up in the map, and then you'll find it. <laughs> you can't even see it on the map. Yeah, you can't even see it. No, you can't even find it on the map. It's <laughs> that small. <laughs> well, that's so cool. Um, every athlete has a journey and a story. Why don't we talk about the journey here to Rio for you guys? What have you been through to get here? Uh, for me, um, I've started uh, judo back in 2012 until now. Uh, for me, it's really difficult because uh, it's not a full-time thing. I've also got a full-time job back home and also a family, a wife and a daughter. So I have to tackle all this at once, uh, try to get everything together. And the main thing is uh, judo back home in Nauru is really small. So what I, what I did to actually try to gain, gain experience and to build up up till now, I had to fly out go overseas, compete in uh, tournaments, trying to gain experience. And just for the last three months before coming down here, I flew down to Japan and did a lot of training there. Yeah. Elson, what's your journey been like? Um, well, it's been a, for me, it's really cool. Like, because it takes, uh, it took me 16 years to be part of this Olympics and I'm pretty happy because my my training and hard working has been paid and here I am now competing at the biggest event the Olympics 2016 yeah. and you've met some pretty famous athletes haven't you why don't you tell us the story about the most famous people you've met oh uh, yeah I've met this, this is a good story <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I've met the two Williams sisters and then I thought I could take a picture with them and then after I can trade pins but actually they didn't trade pin with me so they just I just took the picture and then I think one of them just uh, like push like uh, grab me and they said oh can I have two pins and I said okay so in return I thought like I would uh, get a, a USA pin but no they just took my pin and then <laughs> took off but at the end I'm still happy because I 
took a picture with them. Had to get a picture. Yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned something that people who haven't been to the Olympics might not know about, the, the trading of pins. And you can see that actually Elson's got loads of really, really cool ones along here. I mean, tell it, and you've got some too. Uh, starting, yeah. You're just starting. <laughs> what, tell us about this. What, what is it all about? Um, actually, uh, for me, I think it's a really good idea that they have this um, thing going on for trading pins that um, enables the athletes and different people from different countries to engage in communications and you know, get to have a little bit of chat, talk to one another, try to know one another. I mean, it's a really cool thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think your pins are a collector's item because you're, oh, I yeah. mean, you're such a small country and they're so unusual. So um, I'm certainly pleased that I got a couple from these guys and they're on my accreditation as well. Um, we've got a question coming in. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? A, a question to both of you. Oh, uh, well, yeah, well, you just gotta believe in yourself. Don't let things hold you back. Believe that you can do whatever that you're trying to accomplish in life and just work for that. Um, well, for me, just train hard and just do your best and don't complain. Just go on with it, with the pain. Pain is pain. So as the saying is, no pain, no gain. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Olympics is just such an amazing event, isn't it? And you're both here for the first time. It's a cliche with athletes. They talk about the blood, sweat, and tears. That's what you put into it. Uh, another question for both of you. W what is it that brings on the tears? What is it that makes you emotional about what you do? Uh, well, for me, because I've got like the, uh, the hope for the, the country on my shoulders. And for me, really, I'm doing it for personally and also my family. So that is what's pushing me to do what I'm doing right now and it's enabling me to get me where I am so far. You're yeah. a long way from home, you've got a young family, do you, do you miss them? Yes, every day, think of them every single day. Mm. That's my motivation right there. Yeah. Mm. What about you Elson, what, what brings on the tears for you, what gets you emotional? Um, well, the long training I have and for sacrificing, not staying with my family for for nearly like six years or five years training overseas and I'm just happy that I achieve what um, people back home at my age not really like can take yeah I, I, th I guess this is something that maybe we take for granted but you know you are representing your country now there are people representing the United States here but they have a team of 550 people it, it's just you guys I mean how do you kind of process that responsibility that you are out here representing your whole nation? Mm. Yeah, that is right. Um, we are like the smallest uh, number of athletes here right now in the Olympics. But um, what's getting me going is um, I don't overthink it too much. I try to concentrate on my event and my performance and try to uh, win my matches. So that's what's getting me through. Mm. All right. Now, there's a an art or a science or a treatment form called cupping, which has become very popular at these Olympics because Michael Phelps swam the other night covered uh, in these big circular bruises. Have you, have you seen the pictures of Michael Phelps covered in these kind of big blotches? And it's a treatment in certain parts of the world like Asia. Uh, this is one of the questions that's come in from one of our Facebook viewers. Do you know anything about it? Do you do it? Um, no, I don't know anything about it because I don't, I don't do that cupping thing because, right. yeah. Doesn't make. I just don't know. <laughs> you even know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know because okay. I've seen with uh, on Michael Phelps, but yeah. I don't know what is it for. So, uh, for me, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with that, but I've actually never, uh, I've never tried it. So I just go old school. I stay with like traditional massage, and yeah, that's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> Get the blood flowing again, and yeah. I'm all good. It might be that cupping's really old school because it's been around for thousands of years, but I mean, wh whatever works. Um, something that was really prominent in the build-up to these Olympics was doping, cheating, Russia and some of the athletes from Russia banned, and the whole weightlifting team was banned, and Nelson is in weightlifting. I mean, let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? What is it like competing against these guys, and, and how do you deal with the knowledge that they might be cheating? Um, well... Competing with the cheat athletes, it's it's not really quite fair for the clean athletes because 
like some athletes in weightlifting can like just train this year and then the next year they start to break world records and Olympic champion like and then whilst the other clean athletes took them years to achieve the, their goals like gold medalists in the Olympics so yeah it's not it's not really good yeah it's not good at all yeah. but you don't have to worry about it because the Russians aren't in weightlifting yeah, this year right. don't really yeah <laughs> Good stuff. Well, guys, it's been absolutely fantastic meeting you. I'm really glad to have been able to share in a part of your Olympic experience, and it's a very special journey for you both. So, Elston and Rovini, thank you both so much. Uh, and that concludes our, our Facebook chat. It's been great to have you guys along with us. Thanks for all the best wishes. We've got a lot of best wishes for you guys. Thanks for your questions. Too.